always make a lot. <laughs> so for those of y'all that don't know me, I'm Steve Williams, I'm the city manager for the city of Carthage. I want to welcome you here tonight. What a great event this is this is gonna be. Uh, at this time I want to thank Cindy Deloney for starting this Arts Walk of Fame. Sometimes we forget the talent we have in our community and it's a, a great thing to recognize them for their talents and what they bring to our community. And so I want to give a, a round of applause for Cindy at this point. Thank you. And I will give her a little commercial, so if you don't have anything to do tomorrow night, the film festival that she started, Cindy, it's been how long? Five years? Five years. Five years. Uh, and started out as something we thought, well, we'll try this, or she said, we'll try this, and didn't know if we would have anybody that would participate. And we have people from all over the world that submit films and come uh, to our town and we always have great comments of how this is one of the best film festivals they, that they go to. And so if you don't have anything to do tomorrow night, come up here and you'll see about two hours of various films and, and, uh, that are, are put together for that. And it's, a, it's a really good night also. But I want to thank you all for coming. And you know, if you're not from here and you're in Carthage, be sure to look around. Uh, more importantly, go spend some money so I have some sales tax to spend. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Darren McDaniel, um, former student, current mentee, current friend, uh, most importantly, brother in Christ to uh, Mr. Donnie Pitchford. Ladies and gentlemen, it's both an honor and a privilege to stand here before you as we gather to celebrate an extraordinary individual's induction into the Carthage Main Street Arts Walk of Fame. It has been a little over a year since I first called Miss Cindy inquiring about this process and just asking questions. How did I get in? Like, what's the process? And then finally just blurting out, Donnie Pitchford belongs in this. When she reached out to inform me that his time had finally come, it was certainly a hard task to keep it quiet for a couple of weeks. And at this time, I want you to sit back and enjoy a journey through the life of Mr. Donnie Pitchford, narrated by Dr. Joe Oliver, retired professor of communications at Stephen F. Austin State University. And also, he was one of my very first graduate school instructors and the chair of my master's degree program. Cartoonist Donnie Pitchford was born in East Texas. After the family moved to Memphis, Tennessee when Donnie was five, he announced, I'm going to be a cartoonist. Inspired by comics and animation, he started creating his own characters. He wrote and illustrated stories which were read by family and friends. At some point, his father told him of an old radio comedy show. Lum and Abner. After moving back to Texas in 1970, Donnie began corresponding with Popeye comic book cartoonist George Wildman, forming a friendship that would span 45 years. Donnie continued to write and illustrate throughout his public school years. At Spring Hill High School, the media director offered Donnie a spot on the television crew at Longview First United Methodist Church. During the 1970s, the Pitchford family operated a silkscreen business. Donnie created the artwork, and the entire family collaborated to print and package thousands of units of imprinted sportswear, including several red and white Carthage Bulldogs t-shirts. During college, Donnie worked for Duplicating Services Company in Longview in all phases of the graphic arts business. Majoring in commercial art at Kilgore College and then art education at Stephen F. Austin State University, Donnie prepared himself for his chosen career. While at SFA, Donnie finally heard Lum and Abner 
rebroadcast on campus radio station, KSAU. This led in 1984 to the formation of the National Lum and Abner Society. Hi there, this is Sam Brown, Ville Ridge, Illinois. I met Donnie Pitchford in early 1982 as a result of our mutual interests in old time radio and specifically the Lum and Abner program. Donnie is a co-founder and president of the National Lum and Abner Society. He has spent countless hours with his expertise in printing, art, photography, audio video production, and the hours spent doing interviews to promote the society to make it a first class organization. I also know of his loyal dedication to his family, friends, his career, his students, his endeavors in retirement as far as his artwork and audio and video productions and his church. So for over 40 years, I've called him friend. Congratulations, Donnie. Donnie provided a variety of art for the National Lum and Abner Society, as well as for the International Popeye Fan Club. He entered the education profession in 1983, teaching art and graphic arts at Hawkins High School. His students earned a number of first place honors in regional and state competition. After graduate work at the University of Texas and Tyler in 1985, Donnie accepted a teaching position at Carthage High School. CHS TV, founded in 1981 at Carthage High School, offered students the opportunity to learn radio and television production. In 1986, Donnie married his best friend and the love of his life, Laura Pearson, a gifted educator. Together, they're active members of the First Methodist Church in Carthage, Texas. In the mid-80s, while an educator, Donnie still held a dream of being a cartoonist. He had expected the Carthage teaching job to extend for a year or two, but it lasted 25 years. CHS TV students under Donnie's leadership learned media history and technical skills while assisting in the production of over 1,000 editions of the radio television program Carthage Schools present. Thanks to KGAS, the local commercial radio station, students were able to hear and see broadcasts of their work. And when the digital age arrived, CHS TV streamed many Carthage ISD events live. Students created newscasts, commercials, and dramatic videos. Many of these productions offered positive messages to young people, discouraging the use of tobacco, alcohol, and illicit drugs. For 25 consecutive years of Donnie's tenure, CHS TV students earned state honors in media production. Many of those awards were state championships, the best of the best. Several CHS TV graduates now work in the industry around the nation and abroad. Hi, I'm Derek Johnson, and I was a student of Donnie Pitchford's back in 1999 through 2001. And uh, what can I say about Mr. Pitchford? You're a terrific artist, a wonderful human being, and a great educator. And I'm proud to call you my friend, and I'm very proud of you for this wonderful honor. And um, it's fun watching you on your journey as a cartoonist and as an artist, and uh, this is well deserved. Thank you for everything you've done. But what about the nagging desire to be a cartoonist? Donnie never forgot it. He met in person with his mentor, George Wildman, and other comics professionals. In 2009, educator, cartoonist, High Eisman asked Donnie, why are you still teaching? You're a cartoonist. Donnie said this was like being knighted. After his retirement from education in 2010, Donnie changed careers. 
He was commissioned by the editor of Charlton Spotlight magazine, Michael Ambrose, to paint a portrait of his mentor, George Wildman. This led to work with Wildman and other award-winning writers and artists. Let's take a look at these collaborations and some solo efforts. In 2011, Donnie began producing the Lum and Abner comic strip. A new generation of Lum and Abner fans can now read and hear the adventures of the old fellows from down at Pine Ridge. Blind friends and others can now listen to audio adaptations of each comic strip voiced by gifted actors. Sound effects and original music enhance the productions. Original art for a Lum and Abner comic strip celebrating the 60th anniversary of the Mickey Mouse Club was displayed at the Disney Hometown Toon Fest in Marceline, Missouri in 2015. As a member of the Texas Cartoonists and the National Cartoonists Society, Donnie has performed Chalk Talks for students and children's hospitals. Among his activities, he's donated art to the National Cartoonists Society charity auction each year. Artists were asked to honor Peanuts creator Charles Schultz's 100th birthday with tributes, which now reside in the Charles Schultz Museum. With his brother Terry, Donnie was asked to assist Carthage's renowned sculptor Bob Harness in 2017. The Harness team completed large sculptures for the Red River Valley Veterans Memorial in Paris, Texas. The team created an even larger statue of Judge Roy Hoffines, which was installed at the University of Houston. Donnie joined Bob in sculpting award plaques for the Texas Country Music Hall of Fame, which Donnie continues producing to this day. In 2018, Donnie received a Distinguished Alumnus Award from his alma mater, Spring Hill High School. An exhibition of his work, The Wonderful World of Comics, was showcased in the Faye Allison Gallery at Panola College Library in 2019. 
Donnie has been honored with a feature article in Sawdust, the alumni magazine of Stephen F. Austin State University. He's been featured in Panola Crossroads Magazine, the Panola Watchman, and other publications. He has guested twice on the statewide radio program, The Sound of Texas with Tumbleweed Smith. Also our local KGAS Panola Pride with Jerry Hansen and various other online podcasts. The Lum and Abner comic strip and audio feature continues to be released every Sunday. And Donnie Pitchford invites you to join him and see just what's going on with the two old fellows down in Pine Ridge. So tonight, we're not just here honoring a remarkable artist or a visionary creator. We are celebrating a mentor, a guiding light, and an inspiration to many, including myself, a strong, unapologetic, passionate believer of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mr. Donnie Pitchford has not only made significant contributions to the world of art, but has also profoundly impacted the lives of so many different people from different walks of life. If you ever get a moment with him, Ask him to share with you a story about a friend who recently passed away and those last words that that friend spoke from his dying bed and how in his last days that man gave his life to Christ. Mr. P, as most of his former students call him, will be modest with the story, I am sure. But it was the power of prayer for Mr. P and others like him that helped save that man's eternal life. It is people like Mr. P that makes this world a better place. From the first time I met Mr. P as a freshman in high school, I was struck by his incredible dedication to his craft, which just happened to be those radio, TV, journalism things that I truly enjoyed. He would spend countless hours, evenings, days, and even weekends doing CHS TV work. This is just one of those countless examples I could give to demonstrate his dedication to parties in high school. And Mrs. P always made sure we had good treats to feast on. We know he needs a strong, better half, not to mention a better looking half, to accomplish the things that he's accomplished. So thank you as well, Mrs. P, for your care and your kindness. So as we celebrate this well-deserved recognition, let us also acknowledge the broader significance of this moment. It is a testament to the power of art to transform lives, give a sense of light to those who can't physically see, and give life to the unyielded pursuit of one's passion. So without further ado, it gives me immense pleasure to introduce a true luminary in the world of art, a mentor of excellence, and now a distinguished member of the Carthage Main Street Arts Walk of Fame. Please join me in welcoming and congratulating Mr. Donnie Pitcher. Sends his apologies. He couldn't be here. 
he was having some uh, back, <coughs> some health issues and could not be here. Um, I uh, want to thank Dr. Joe Oliver for the narration he did. He also provides narration for the Lone Abner comic strip and just uh, an incredible person. One of Darren's instructors, as he explained to you, there's so many people I'm going to really ball this thing out if I try to mention everybody, but I'm so touched that uh, so many of our church family are here from First Methodist Church and appreciate you so much. I thank the uh, city of Carthage, the Main Street, um, Cindy Deloney, Jerry and Wanda Hanson of our radio station, the Manola Watchman. I'm, uh, I'm sure I'm leaving somebody out and I apologize. This has been such a blessing, and uh, there's really one blessing in my life that is greater, uh, and of course, my marriage is one of them. But the greatest of all is knowing that uh, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Can I hear another amen? Amen. Let me hear a big amen. Amen. Let me hear a Methodist amen. 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 <laughs> Seriously, thank you so much, and uh, this has just been an incredible honor. I appreciate everyone, and thank you again. Whereas Donnie Pitcher, Pitcher, graphic artist and cartoonist, is a graduate of Kilgore College Art Instruction Schools. Stephen F. Austin State University and UT Tyler, and where his picture worked in education teaching at Hawkins High School, Nola College, and Carthage High School, with 25 of those years spent directing CHS TV, where his teams earned state championships for 20 consecutive years. Whereas in 2010, Pitchford returned to his first love, being a cartoonist. In 2011, he began the weekly Lum and Abner comic strip, and also began creating comic book stories and art for Argo Press of Austin. He illustrated children's books, wrote scripts for the Dick Tracy newspaper strip, and produced the science fiction comedy strip, Tib and the Rock and Frog, where his picture won many awards for his honor, excuse me, picture won many awards to honor his achievements, including the Who's Who in Art from Kilgore College and a Distinguished Alumnus Award from Spring Hill ISD. Whereas in 2017, Pitcher began assisting Carthage sculptor Bob Harness and currently sculpts the portraits for the Texas Country Music Hall of Fame plaques. Now, therefore, I, Merrill, and Joe Frown do hereby deem it an, <coughs> an honor and a pleasure to extend this key to the city of Donnie Pitcher on the eve of his induction to the Carthage Main Street Arts Walk of Fame. With sincere congratulations, signed over Joe Frown, the city of Carthage. Not be here tonight. She had a previous trip planned, and 
I had gone over there today to show her where we put the plaque, and I'm, I'm just buying Miss Debbie some time right now. But I'm going to tell you all the story anyway, because it cracked me up. So I told uh, Emily, I said, come out here and see this. It's so pretty. When we made the decision to move it over there, and my husband just so graciously always puts the plaques in the sidewalk for us, and he asked me, he said, well, if it, if it, if you walk, because it's a Mark's walk, right? If you walk all the way around the square, then that means Miss Debbie's would be facing this way. He said, but what do you think, since it's right in front of the windows and we're not putting it over there, if we face it this way, where you're looking down at it and you can read it and then you look up at the building, and I said, yes, that makes perfect sense. So I was telling Emily that, and I said, now Emily, in 50 years, when the walk reaches over here, you can tell them that Cindy said it's okay to move it if you want to. And she said, okay, I'll tell them Cindy's dead, but she said do whatever you want. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what you should tell them. And, then, uh, and my husband said, Dad, should you put that in your wheel? I said, maybe so, I don't know. But I think you will remember. She'll just be in her 70s then, so it'll be fine. She'll remember. So we are going to go out now. And um, did we close the road? I think he is now. Okay, he's closing the road right now, so feel free to get in the road and be able to take pictures of them unveiling their plaque. We'll go over to Road Performing Arts and we'll get Miss Debbie's, and then we'll come right over here to Brian and Grain, which is where uh, Donnie's is right before you get to Brian and Grain, and we will unveil his plaque. So we will meet y'all outside.